So let me remind you first off how to create a time lapse in Photoshop if you have these individual images. The first thing is these are all RAW files. And so what I would do is I would select all the RAW files. I just hold shift. I got the last one already selected. I'll hold shift and get the first one. I'd type command R, that's control R to say open them in RAW. Or you could go to the file menu where you find the choice of open in camera RAW. And then I'm going to hit the select all button at the top so any change I make to one of them will be applied to the others as well. Make sense? Similar to what we do with the panorama to make sure you have a consistent kind of adjustment. And then I could optimize these. And I'm not going to spend much of any time optimizing them because uh, we've already talked about adjusting your images uh, with Camera Raw. And I would just make this look a little better uh, in many different ways here. When I'm done, I hit the Done button to say I'm done adjusting my pictures. And then in order to create a time lapse, you need to get these saved out as either a JPEG or a TIFF. You can't do the time lapse from RAW files. So in order to create the JPEGs or TIFFs, I would go to the Tools menu, I would choose Photoshop, and there's a choice in here called Image Processor. What Image Processor is designed to do is take multiple images and quickly scale them down and save them in common file formats like JPEG or TIFF. So when I choose Image Processor, it asks me which settings I'd like to use. And what I'm going to do is tell it to save these as JPEGs. Usually you can have uh, resize to fit turned on and you can type in the size you want for your video. But I'm not going to do that. That's what I do for a straightforward time lapse where I don't want it to look as if the camera is moving or zooming. If I want it to look as if the camera is moving or zooming, then I don't want to rescale this image down. I, I want to leave it at full size because then we have, we can show just a small portion of it at the beginning and pan across it. We have a lot more information to work with. So I'm just going to make sure resize to fit is turned off. Then I'd usually hit run up here and that would end up creating a bunch of full size JPEGs. I'm not going to make you wait for that because it can take a little bit of time coming from full size images. I've already ran it and I have a folder right here called full size JPEG which is simply the result of doing that. The other thing that I need to do is make sure that the file names that are there are completely sequential. If I look at the original files uh, they have long file names, but I don't know that they're all sequential. If I look, uh, I think there were some that were missing. 49, 48, 47, but I, it won't work if there's any break in the numbering scheme of the files. So what I do, just to be sure of that, once I've applied the image processor, I take the resulting folder of images, I go to the Tools menu, and first I need to choose Select All, so I'll type Command A to Select All. Then I can choose Batch Rename. And I'm just going to rename these where I give it any name I want. And I'll tell it to start its numbering with 1. So all I have this set up for is some text that I typed in and then what's called a sequence number. And sequence number simply means number these files, starting with the number I put in here and incrementing up by 1 on each. So I'll click Rename, and then it will quickly rename all those files, and that's just to be sure that we don't have any breaks in the numbering. You know, if I happen to have thrown out one of those files or something and, and there was a gap, this wouldn't work. All right, we got what I want. Now I'm going to take those images and I'm going to put them somewhere that's easy to remember, easy to get to. I'll just put them on my desktop because I'm going to have to navigate them to them from within Photoshop. It's just convenient if I have it somewhere uh, convenient. So I go to Photoshop now. I go to the File menu and I choose Open. And in the Open dialog box, I navigate to wherever those files happen to be. Mine are in this folder called Full Size JPEG. I click on the very first image that's in that folder, and the only other thing I need to do is at the bottom of my screen is a checkbox. The checkbox is called Image Sequence. If I turn that on when the first image in that folder is selected, then it's going to also open all of the other files as well and turn it into a video.